So in the second video of the kombucha series, I showed you how to prepare the SCOBY for another ferment and how to second ferment with fruit and some other things. In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite way to flavor or second ferment your kombucha, and that's with herbs, teas, and essential oils. And the reason I like that so much is because as traditional Chinese medicine calls it, there's more action or energy and nutrients within these herbs. But there's also, when you do it this way, it also has less sugar and less alcohol than, especially with fruit fermentation, which happens to be the most popular. So I'm gonna talk more, more about alcohol and sugar at the end of this video. But the first of the three ways I'm gonna show you is we're gonna start with some simple herbs like basil and mint, and we're gonna start by juicing those. All you need is about one teaspoon of the pressed juice per eight ounces, then about the same amount for ginger. After that, I like to add a half a teaspoon of blue-green algae powder. Links for the cleanest source of blue-green algae will be on my blog at theartofunity.com. Close it for a couple of days from carbonation, then refrigerate it and drink. This method is less acidic, produces less sugar and alcohol than fruit fermented kombucha. Now similar to this, another low sugar, low alcohol option to flavor this with is just tea. You can use loose tea or you can use it in a tea bag. And at this point, after taking the scoby out, you can use any tea you want, such as jasmine, chamomile, nettle, hibiscus, passion fruit, or any herbal tea you like, even hops. You can add loose tea leaves or a tea bag right into the kombucha, let's sit for four hours or more, depending on the strength of the tea you prefer. Or instead of using the leaves or tea bags in the kombucha, you can steep a cup of tea, let it cool, and add the finished tea right into the kombucha. Now although you can, you don't need to mix loose tea with steep tea, I just did it to show. If loose tea is used, strain after four hours and up to four days, depending on the strength of the tea you used and your preference. Now in this next one, I'm gonna use hops, which is similar tasting to a bitter floral tea or even a light IPA beer. Now you can use whole hops or the pellets like I use here, just use a considerable amount less when using the pellets. Now after closing, I'll leave this out of the refrigerator for a couple of days to a week, then strain and refrigerate. And you can see my blog for links on that. And a third low sugar, low alcohol option is the easiest by flavoring with essential oils. Just add two or three drops for 16 ounces, but only use edible grade therapeutic essential oils like this one with the nutritional facts on the bottle. After adding flavoring with the herbs or teas, you can leave it out for some carbonation or just refrigerate it. Now fermenting this way is less acidic, produces less alcohol and less sugar than for fruit fermentation, for example. So just like the other fermentations, if after you put the kombucha and the herbs inside the bottle, close it up, and if you want more carbonation, leave it out for a couple days, and if not, just put it in the refrigerator, particularly with the blue-green algae and the hops, which are both my favorite of all these methods I just showed you, the carbonation builds up pretty quickly. So after, if you leave it out for more than two or three days, make sure you check it just by burping it to make sure it's not too much carbonation that it's going to explode. Now just remember the warmer it is, the quicker the probiotics and enzymes are going to form within the bottle, but also the stronger the carbonation will get more rapidly. And there's no need to add anything to get the carbonation. It happens as a natural process of the fermentation alone. Now I like to put it in these round bottles because I've exploded the square ones. They don't seem to be as strong after leaving it out for more than three or four days. So uh, always be careful of that. And the more full the bottle is, close to one inch from the top, the more carbonation will form. Now because this is acidic, it has sugar and alcohol in it, I like to drink this in moderation. No more than two or three cups a day. And I don't sip it because the acid is not great for the enamel on your teeth but I have this with the other fermented foods that I use, and you can see my videos on those, such as fermented vegetables, kefir, pickles, and some of the other natural methods that I have on the site for getting good bacteria. Now, regarding the alcohol and sugar, they say there's between 0.5% and 2.5% alcohol in most kombuchas, and that's a low amount that your body can detox. Most beers have between six and 9%, but for this reason, I don't suggest this for children, pregnant women, nursing mothers, those with uh, problems with their liver, or those that are in recovery. Now, 
in regarding the sugar, this usually works out to one gram per ounce. So an eight ounce glass of that will have eight grams of sugar, and it's usually double that for fruit fermentation. So an eight ounce glass of that will have 16 grams of sugar. But if you wanna know exactly how much is in your brew, because it will differ every time, I show exactly how to measure this with the hydrometer on my site. Now this is a great technique and I hope you try it. And if you wanna take this a step further, check out my video on how to infuse energy or chi into your food or your drinks using the practice of Qigong. Good luck with this.